So today, I have a tale to tell. A tale that shall sweep you off your feet and carry you to distant lands of love, adventure, and mystique. Are you ready to embark on a journey filled with twists and turns? A tale where love conquers all? Then buckle up, for Rachel and Abby's story awaits you. But before we dive into the world of intrigue, allow me to extend an invitation to you. Join us on our YouTube channel, where more enchanting stories and captivating content await. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and become a part of our ever-growing community. Now, without further ado, let's pull back the curtain and step into the world of Rachel and Abby. Let the story unfold. As the sun began to dip low in the sky, painting the horizon with hues of pink and orange, Rachel looked out the window, a reflective smile on her face. The new reality was both exhilarating and a little nerve-wracking. The MTF transition timeline was unfolding in an unexpected way, but it was a journey that had brought a sense of fulfillment and excitement. A few days had passed since Abby had introduced Rachel to the world of cross-dressing and fully feminized her. The boy-to-girl makeup transformation had been quite the experience, one that opened up a new realm of connection and intimacy between them. I have a surprise for you, Rachel, Abby said, interrupting Rachel's thoughts. Rachel turned to see Abby holding a beautifully wrapped box. The excitement in Abby's eyes was contagious, and Rachel's heart began to race. What's this? Rachel asked, her voice tinged with anticipation. Abby's lips curled into a mysterious smile. Why don't you open it and see? The unwrapping was done with delicate care, revealing a stunning cross-dress from one of the top cross-dresses UK designers. Rachel's eyes widened at the sight of the beautiful garment. This is absolutely gorgeous, Abby. Rachel exclaimed, her voice filled with genuine joy. You deserve it, Abby replied, her eyes twinkling. I've noticed how much you've embraced your new identity, and I wanted to reward you. They spent the evening trying on different outfits, experimenting with various styles of cross-dressing. The male-to-female makeup techniques Abby used were transformative, making Rachel feel beautiful and confident. Each look was a new discovery, a fresh expression of who Rachel was becoming. Later that night, Abby took Rachel by the hand and led her to the living room. I've been thinking, Abby began, her voice soft and serious, about how we can make this work in our everyday lives, even at work. The idea of cross-dressing in the workplace had been a fleeting thought in Rachel's mind, but she hadn't given it serious consideration. Abby's words were a catalyst, sparking new possibilities. I've done some research, Abby continued, and there are support groups and resources for those who choose to explore cross-dressing style and even gender role reversal. I believe we can make this a beautiful part of our lives, not just behind closed doors. Rachel's heart swelled with gratitude and love for Abby. The trust, acceptance, and willingness to explore this new terrain together were extraordinary gifts. The days turned into weeks, and Rachel found herself embracing her dual identity with more confidence. They even found an online community of cross-dressers and joined discussions about transgender beauty, MTF transition timeline experiences, and stories of forced MTF transition stories. These were people who understood, people who could share their wisdom and encouragement. Rachel's journey was filled with ups and downs, challenges and triumphs, but throughout it all, Abby's unwavering support was her anchor. The cross-dressing made easy approach that Abby encouraged allowed Rachel to discover parts of herself she had never known existed. Sometimes, in quiet moments, Rachel would reflect on the boy-to-girl transformation, the metamorphosis that had brought her closer to Abby and to herself. It was a beautiful reminder that life was a tapestry, woven with threads of experiences, choices, and self-discovery a tapestry that was uniquely hers. The MTF transition was more than a physical change. It was a journey of the soul, a profound connection to her authentic self. The lines between genders blurred, creating a harmony that resonated with the very core of who she was. At every step of the way, Abby was there, her love and understanding a constant source of strength. Together, they forged a path that transcended societal norms and embraced the beauty of being human in all its complexity. As the days unfolded, Rachel and Abby continued to grow, explore, and love. Their story was a living testament to the power of acceptance, connection, and the courage to be oneself, unapologetically and passionately. They knew that their story was still being written, a story filled with potential and promise, a story that was uniquely theirs. Days turned into weeks, and Rachel's new life continued with Abby. They'd go shopping together, 
dine out and even attend parties, all the while keeping Rachel's transformation a well-guarded secret. They'd laugh and dance, and the intimacy they shared only deepened. Abby seemed content, and Rachel was enjoying the new experiences too. Still, as the days went by, the lack of physical release started to bother Rachel. But she knew that complaining or asking to be released from the chastity cage might ruin everything. So, she pushed aside her physical desires and focused on the emotional connection with Abby. But fate had a twist in store. One day, as they were shopping at Cross Dresses UK, a well-known boutique in town, Abby bumped into an old friend, Isabel. Tall, striking, and elegant, Isabel's eyes widened in recognition. Abby, is that you? And who's this lovely lady with you? Isabel inquired, her eyes twinkling with curiosity. This is Rachel, my girlfriend. Abby replied smiling while Rachel offered a polite smile in return. They engaged in a lively conversation, during which Isabel, a psychologist by profession, seemed particularly interested in Rachel. Her eyes studied Rachel's face, and there was an unmistakable spark of recognition in them. After they parted ways, Abby seemed a little uneasy. Rachel asked her about it, but Abby brushed it off, saying it was nothing. However, a few days later, Abby received a message from Isabel, asking if she and Rachel could come over for dinner. Abby agreed, but the invitation filled her with an inexplicable sense of foreboding. The night of the dinner, Rachel and Abby arrived at Isabel's beautiful home, dressed in their best cross dresses. They were greeted warmly, and the evening started off pleasantly enough, with wine and delicious food. But as the evening wore on, Isabel began to ask more pointed questions about Rachel's past her family, her work. Rachel felt a cold shiver run down her spine as she realized that Isabel seemed to know something. Finally, as dessert was served, Isabel looked at Rachel and said, You know, Rachel, you remind me so much of someone I used to know. A young man, actually. He was a patient of mine. He was struggling with his identity, feeling trapped in his male body, longing for a chance to explore his feminine side. Rachel's heart pounded in her chest as Abby looked at her with wide eyes. Isabel continued, I helped him, gave him therapy, allowed him to explore his feelings. But one day, he just disappeared. And now I see you, and I can't help but wonder, are you that young man? Have you found what you were looking for? The room fell into a heavy silence. Rachel looked at Abby, tears welling in her eyes. Abby's face was pale, but she reached across the table and took Rachel's hand. Yes, Isabel, Abby finally said, her voice strong. Rachel was that young man but she's found herself now. She's found love, acceptance, and happiness. And she's not going back. Isabel smiled, her eyes softening. I'm glad. I'm truly glad. That's all I ever wanted for him, for her. The rest of the evening passed in a blur. Rachel felt a mixture of relief and fear, knowing that their secret was out, at least to one person. As they left Isabel's house, Abby turned to Rachel and said, You know I love you, Rachel, but maybe it's time for us to explore what's next for us. Let's start by unlocking that chastity cage. You're free to be who you want to be, not just what I want. Rachel's eyes filled with tears of gratitude and love. She knew that their relationship had reached a new level of trust and understanding. The next day, they visited a transgender beauty clinic, where Rachel began her MTF transition timeline. It was a journey filled with ups and downs, but with Abby by her side, Rachel felt ready to embrace her true self. They continued their life together, exploring new horizons and facing challenges. And every step of the way, they had each other, bound by love and acceptance. The story of Rachel and Abby is one of transformation, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. It's a tale of love, acceptance, and the courage to be oneself, regardless of society's expectations. Their love story continues, filled with unexpected twists, as they embark on a new journey, embracing their unique selves and always supporting each other. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of discovery and pleasure. Abby and Rachel, formerly known as Mark, had found a new level of connection in their relationship, exploring not only their physical desires, but also their emotional depths. However, the reality of their lives started to creep into their fantasy world. Rachel had begun to feel a strange pull, an inexplicable longing for something more, something deeper. The feminization was more than just a role play, it was as if she were being called to something beyond the simple act of cross-dressing. The pair started attending cross-dressing support groups, where they met others like them and learned about the wide variety of experiences and identities that fell under the umbrella of transgender, gender bender, and cross-dressing communities in Canada. Their relationship deepened, 
and Rachel's transformation began to feel less like a game and more like a journey towards self-discovery. One day, while browsing through a Cross Dresses UK online catalog, Abby stumbled upon a mysterious advertisement for a gender swap potion. The description was cryptic, promising a true transformation of body and soul. Although they laughed it off at first, something about it nagged at Rachel. The desire to explore this further was irresistible. After some deliberation, Rachel ordered the potion. Abby, though skeptical, supported the decision, knowing that this path was something Rachel had to explore. The potion arrived in an ornate vial, sealed with a wax emblem depicting a yin and yang symbol. The instructions were simple. Take with an open heart and a clear mind. Embrace the change. One night with Abby by her side, Rachel took the potion. They both waited, half expecting nothing to happen, but something extraordinary occurred. Slowly, Rachel's body began to change. It wasn't just a boy-to-girl makeup transformation, it was something deeper, something real. Over the course of several days, Rachel's body transformed, reshaping into a form that matched her newfound identity. Abby watched in awe as the person she loved became someone new, yet still familiar. They both knew that this was not a forced male-to-female transition, it was something Rachel had chosen, something that felt right. But with this transformation came new challenges. Rachel's family, unaware of her journey, started asking questions. Work became complicated, as she now faced the reality of cross-dressing in the workplace. And then there were the strange dreams, visions of another life, another world where gender roles were reversed, where men were the ones dressing in women's clothing and women held the societal power. They decided to seek the help of a renowned transgender therapist, Dr. Evelyn Harlow, known for her work with MTF transition timelines and her support of the transgender MTF community. Dr. Harlow's office was filled with books about gender role reversal, cross-dressing made easy, and even some short films about cross-dressing men. In their sessions, Rachel and Abby started to unravel the mystery of the potion and the strange visions that followed. Dr. Harlow, intrigued by their story, began to research the origins of the potion, uncovering a forgotten legend of an ancient society where gender was fluid, and people could switch between male and female at will. As they dug deeper, they discovered that the potion was not just a product, but a key to a hidden world, a world that was calling to Rachel, beckoning her to explore her true self, and challenging Abby to understand what it means to love someone beyond the constraints of gender. The journey was far from over, it was only just beginning. Rachel's transformation, both physical and emotional, sent shockwaves through her life. At work she faced discrimination, stares, and whispers, but she also found allies and friends who supported her journey. Her family struggled to understand, but eventually began to accept her for who she truly was. But the dreams persisted, pulling her into a world where gender roles were reversed where men lived as women and women as men. The visions were vivid and surreal, and the more she dreamed, the more she felt connected to this hidden world. Dr. Evelyn Harlow was intrigued by these dreams and the legend of the ancient society. She contacted a colleague, Professor Liam Hargrove, an expert in ancient civilizations and mystical artifacts. Together, they began to unravel the secrets of the potion and the world it unlocked. Through meticulous research and a bit of luck, they discovered a lost city, hidden deep within the Amazon rainforest, where legend said the ancient society had thrived. A place where gender was fluid, where the boundaries of male and female were erased, and where love was celebrated in all its forms. With a mix of trepidation and excitement, Rachel Abbey, Dr. Harlow, and Professor Hargrove planned an expedition to the Lost City. They secured funding from an LGBTQ organization dedicated to preserving history and culture, and soon, they were on their way to the heart of the Amazon. The journey was fraught with danger. The dense jungle, treacherous rivers, and hostile wildlife tested their resolve. Along the way, they encountered indigenous tribes, some of whom held knowledge of the ancient city and its secrets. One tribe, the Urena, recognized Rachel's transformation and welcomed the group with open arms. The Urena held the ancient society's beliefs and practices, seeing gender as a spectrum rather than a binary. They guided the expedition towards the lost city, offering wisdom and protection. After weeks of arduous travel, they finally arrived at the entrance to the lost city. The city was overgrown and hidden by nature, but its beauty was breathtaking. Majestic buildings covered in vines, grand plazas filled with statues of both male and female figures, and a central temple that seemed to pulse with mystical energy. The city was alive with the spirit of a people who had celebrated love and identity in all its forms. 
As they explored, they found ancient texts, artwork, and artifacts that told the story of a civilization that had transcended the boundaries of gender. In the central temple, they discovered a chamber filled with vials of the gender swap potion. The room was adorned with paintings depicting individuals undergoing transformation, celebrating their true selves, and living in harmony with one another. Rachel felt a profound connection to this place, as if she had been here before. The visions, the dreams, the longing, everything led her to this moment. And Abby, standing by her side, realized that their love was not bound by gender, but was part of something greater, something universal. But the story of the lost city was not just a tale of the past, it was a call to action. The ancient society had thrived but had also fallen, consumed by misunderstanding and fear from the outside world. The expedition's findings ignited a global conversation about gender, identity, and acceptance. Rachel became a spokesperson for the transgender community, sharing her story and the lessons learned from the lost city. Abby continued her support, championing love and understanding. Together, they realized that the potion and the city were not just relics of a forgotten time, but symbols of a future where people could live without judgment, without labels, and without fear. And the city itself, it remained hidden, protected by the arena and the jungle, a beacon of hope and a reminder that love and identity are as fluid and beautiful as the river that flowed through its heart. The story of Rachel and Abby is a testament to the power of love, acceptance, and the courage to be oneself. It's a tale that transcends time and place, connecting us all in our shared humanity. The discovery of the lost city and the gender swap potion stirred something in the global consciousness, but it also awakened darker forces. Corporations and governments around the world became interested in the potion's transformative properties. The idea of controlling identity, even manipulating it for profit or power, began to take root in the minds of the unscrupulous. Rachel Abbey, Dr. Harlow, and Professor Hargrove knew that they had stumbled upon something that was both beautiful and dangerous. The ancient city's wisdom was meant to be shared, but the potion's power could easily be abused. A shadowy organization known as the Crisos Order emerged, intent on seizing the potion and unlocking its secrets for their gain. The Order's members were influential and well-connected, operating in the highest echelons of society. They believed that controlling the potion would give them the power to shape humanity's future. The Arena tribe, guardians of the lost city, sensed the impending danger. They sought the help of Rachel and her companions to protect the ancient knowledge. Together, they formed a coalition dedicated to preserving the city's legacy and preventing the potion from falling into the wrong hands. The coalition was diverse, including scientists, scholars, LGBTQ activists, and indigenous leaders. But the Crisos order was relentless. They deployed mercenaries, spies, and even politicians to infiltrate and undermine the coalition. A cat and mouse game unfolded, with both sides racing against time and each other. The story took on a thrilling and suspenseful turn as Rachel, Abby, and their allies embarked on a series of adventures across the globe. From the bustling streets of New York to the ancient ruins of Greece, they followed clues, unraveled mysteries, and faced peril at every corner. They encountered allies in unexpected places, like an enigmatic art dealer with a passion for ancient history, a tech-savvy hacker with a flair for mischief, and a wise and mysterious shaman who guided them with spiritual insight. The more they delved into the Crisos Order's operations, the more they realized that the organization's reach was vast and its plans were grandiose. The Order wanted to redefine human identity itself, using the potion as a tool for social engineering. Rachel's transformation, once a deeply personal journey, became a symbol of resistance against those who would control and manipulate others. Her courage and wisdom inspired a movement, and she became a beacon of hope for those who felt marginalized and misunderstood. As the coalition closed in on the Crisos Order, the stakes grew higher. The Order's leader, a charismatic but cold-hearted visionary named Magnus Kane, was willing to do whatever it took to achieve his goals. The story culminated in a dramatic showdown in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. The coalition and the Crisos Order faced off, battling not just for the potion, but for the very soul of humanity. Amidst the chaos, Rachel and Abby's love was tested, their bonds strengthening as they faced adversity together. The battle was intense, filled with twists and turns, betrayals and triumphs. The climax brought revelations, sacrifices, and a resolution that was both satisfying and thought-provoking. The potion's secrets were protected, 
The Crisos order was defeated, but the questions raised lingered. What does it mean to be oneself? How do we define identity? And who gets to decide? The story of Rachel, Abby, and the Lost City continued to resonate, inspiring conversations, art, and change. It was more than a tale, it was a movement, a reflection of our ever-evolving understanding of who we are and who we can be. In the early days of their expedition, Rachel and Abby's relationship was merely a professional one. Rachel, the brilliant scientist, was focused and driven, while Abby, the adventurous explorer, was bold and impulsive. Their differing personalities both complemented and clashed with one another. As they journeyed into the Amazon together, their connection deepened. They discovered that they shared more than just an interest in the lost city. Their dreams, their fears, their aspirations all resonated with one another. Slow, lingering glances turned into soft, meaningful conversations by the fireside. Rachel's transformation after drinking the gender swap potion only intensified their connection. Abby's acceptance and support during this profound change forged a trust between them that transcended mere friendship. They understood each other in ways that words could hardly describe. But love is never simple, and theirs was a relationship filled with complexities. Abby struggled with her growing feelings for Rachel, unsure of how to reconcile them with her understanding of herself. Rachel, in turn, faced her own doubts, grappling with her new identity and what it meant for her connection with Abby. In the quiet moments, away from the intrigue and danger, they found solace in each other's presence. They danced together in the Arena tribe celebrations, their bodies moving as one. They confided in each other, their words weaving a tapestry of intimacy that neither had ever experienced before. The romance blossomed amidst the lush rainforests and ancient ruins, a love as wild and untamed as the landscape around them. It was a love that challenged them, pushed them to grow, and helped them to see themselves in the world in new ways. Yet, the looming threat of the Crisos order cast a shadow over their happiness. The struggle to protect the potion and the ancient city put their relationship to the test. Abby's impulsiveness clashed with Rachel's caution, leading to arguments and misunderstandings. The pressures of their mission weighed heavily on them, threatening to pull them apart. But through it all, their love endured. It was a force as powerful as any they faced, a connection that grounded them and gave them strength. In the climactic battle with the Crisos Order, when all seemed lost, it was their love that saved them. Abby's bravery, fueled by her love for Rachel, turned the tide. Rachel's wisdom, guided by her love for Abby, brought them to victory. In the aftermath, as they stood amidst the ruins of a battle fought and won, they knew that their love was more than just a fleeting romance. It was a partnership, a commitment, a bond that would endure whatever the world might throw their way. Their story was a testament to the power of love to transform, to heal, to inspire. It was a love that transcended labels and definitions, a love that was uniquely theirs. And as they gazed into each other's eyes, in a world forever changed by their actions, they knew that they were home. With the Crisos order defeated and the ancient city's secrets safe, Rachel and Abby's mission seemed complete, but the thirst for discovery that had united them was not so easily quenched. The world was full of mysteries, and they knew that they were destined to uncover more. They returned to the world, celebrated and renowned for their victory, but they were changed. They sought not fame or fortune, but the joy of exploration and the warmth of each other's company. In the bustling streets of Paris, they danced on rooftops, their laughter ringing through the night. In the vast deserts of Egypt, they uncovered hidden tombs, their hands brushing together in the dim torchlight. On the snowy peaks of Nepal, they gazed at the stars, dreaming of what lay beyond. Their love was not confined to grand gestures or poetic declarations, it was found in the small, everyday moments. Breakfasts cooked together, shared glances across a crowded room, the simple pleasure of each other's presence. But their world was not one that allowed them to forget the past. The shadow of the Crisos order lingered. There were those who sought the power they had protected, those who would stop at nothing to obtain it. A new adventure called, one that would test them in ways they had never imagined. They found themselves drawn into a web of intrigue and danger, a conspiracy that reached the highest levels of power. Old allies and enemies resurfaced, and they were forced to confront not just external threats, but the unresolved issues that lay between them. The line between love and duty, personal and professional, blurred. They were faced with choices that would define not just their relationship, but their very identities. As they ventured into the unknown, they were challenged, pushed to their limits, faced with truths they had never anticipated. Their love was not just a comfort, it was a catalyst, 
forcing them to grow, to evolve, to become something more. They fought together, cried together, laughed together. They discovered that love was not a destination but a journey, a dynamic and ever-changing force that required effort, commitment and understanding. Through trials and tribulations, they forged a bond that was unbreakable. They learned that love was not about perfection, but about embracing imperfection, not about escaping reality, but about facing it together. And as they stood on the precipice of a new beginning, hand in hand, they knew that they were ready for whatever lay ahead. For they had each other, and that was all they needed. In the tranquil countryside of England, nestled amidst fields of blooming flowers, stood a charming cottage. It was a far cry from the bustling cities and hidden chambers they had explored, yet it was a place Rachel and Abby had come to call home. Their lives were no longer ruled by quests and danger, but by the rhythms of nature and the joy of each other's company. They spent their days wandering through forests, painting landscapes, reading by the fireplace, and reminiscing about their adventures. But it was not the excitement of the past that held them, it was the serenity of the present and the promise of the future. One day, as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with hues of gold and pink, they stood by a small lake behind their home. The world around them was bathed in a magical glow, and they felt a connection to everything, to each other and to the universe itself. Rachel turned to Abby, her eyes twinkling with love and contentment. We've seen so much, done so much, haven't we? Abby smiled, squeezing Rachel's hand. Yes, we have, and I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anyone else. They stood in silence for a moment, lost in each other's eyes. Then Rachel reached into her pocket and pulled out a small, delicate box. She opened it, revealing a pair of golden rings, intertwined, a symbol of their eternal connection. Abby, will you marry me? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Tears welled in Abby's eyes as she nodded, her voice choked with emotion. Yes, a thousand times yes. They embraced, the world around them forgotten, lost in the perfection of the moment. They knew that their journey had not ended but merely transformed, taking on a new shape, a new path. The wedding was a simple affair, attended by close friends and family. They exchanged vows beneath an arch of flowers, their words sincere and heartfelt. From that day forward, they lived a life filled with love and happiness. They grew old together, their bond deepening with each passing year, a testament to the enduring power of love. And as they sat on their porch, watching the sunset, hand in hand, they knew that they had found their happily ever after.